This time on The Gadget Show. <laughs> Otis and I are out to save you a lot of money. Honestly, hundreds of quid are up for grabs. The sexy one and the other sexy one go head-to-head -head in a money-saving, cost-cutting, wallet-bulging smackdown no. to see who can find the best ways to reduce tech running costs. Turn those hair straighteners off, Otis. Also in the show, Jason checks out this year's top five gadget toys at Britain's biggest toy fair. Oh, and Otis tests the latest action cameras on a white-knuckle bobsleigh ride in Switzerland. to the gadget show. Yeah, and welcome to our new huge studio <laughs> two men. Look at the size of this thing. Hundred and three inches of great big lovely telly and look. You can do stuff like this. You yeah. can show the all-hearing oh, yeah. ear yeah. or the all-seeing specky eye. Which does actually make the all-hearing ear a lot smaller in <laughs> That's perspective. A good thing. Hey, check this out. Does this remind you of anything? Ooh, ooh. Hiding behind the sofa on a Saturday night. Hang Do you know on. what? You two, you could not have started with a more inappropriate gadget. Yeah, okay, admittedly, yeah, it's a great pro telly, but it's going to cost you fifty-seven thousand pounds. Fifty-seven thousand pounds? Yes. And this week's show is about saving you money on your gadgets, not spending yeah, money, right. saving you money on your bills. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Consider yourselves chastised. Thank you. To begin our challenge, Otis and I were summoned to the aptly named Electricity Showrooms Bar in London. Ooh! We knew the challenge would have something to do with money saving, but we weren't quite expecting what happened next. Um... Hello? Before our challenge began, we were going to have a short, sharp and possibly shocking lesson in just how much our tech can cost to run. Susie, Otis, welcome to a special gadget show quiz. With your host, me, Don Jolly. Hello, Susie. <laughs> Hello, Otis. And welcome to the electric surprise budget bonanza. Oh. It's a quiz show. I'm the quiz show host. How's my voice? It's a bit, a bit low. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, OK. That's much better. better. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is a quiz show in which we find out how much it costs for you to fuel your gadgets. OK. OK? Oh. So basically, it's fingers on the buzzers. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you some questions. And if you get it wrong, a little bit of a punishment coming up. I have a thing here called a shock boy, oh, no. which delivers an electric shock. And my lovely assistant here, Katia, uh, you know how to apply these? She's done it before. Do. Release the lube. Please don't try this at home. Our shock boy machine was built by experts. Electric shocks can be dangerous. Now, this is just to make sure that this sort of information sinks in, because it's important you remember it. Yeah. Right. So okay. It's in no way just for me to cause you pain. I want you to know that. OK, question one. Fingers on the buzzers. How much money is spent every year powering consumer electronic products in UK homes? Is it A, £500 million, or B, £3 billion? Pounds? Susie? £3 billion. Pounds. Is correct. Yeah! It's shock time. Shock! No, 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 wait, 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 wait! I didn't hear him! I didn't hear him! <laughs> it's just to make you remember. Take it from me, I will remember. Next question, please. How much money is spent every year on gadgets being left ticking over on standby in UK homes? Is it A, £250 million, pounds, or B, £750 million? £250 million. Pounds. Otis, that is a shocking answer. <laughs> Sustained, it's long and hurts. <laughs> Who knew standby could cost so much? I certainly did now. What's the answer? The... 750 yeah, million pounds. B, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, that's why it works. Question three How much does it cost the average UK motorist to run their car annually? And I need the nearest to the correct answer. So you can both give me an answer. <laughs> 2,338 pounds. Otis? <laughs> £2,337. It's very close, but Susie got £2,338. <laughs> she got it right. Wait, this is a wind-up! <laughs> well, Can I shock him? What are you doing? Please, 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 go. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh! What? 
dance. I look, it set off the dance floor as well. <laughs> you seem to be conducting electricity. OK, I have to admit, I might have sneaked a little look at the answers before. Oh. Final question. Are we ready? You're doing very well. Oh, thank you very That's much. Good. Yeah. Final question. How much have we calculated it would cost to leave an Xbox 360 on for a whole year? I don't own one. £210. £210? Yes. I'm starting to smell a rat here. £211. The correct answer is... £210. No! <laughs> Is that working? It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. And that is the end of the show. The loser is Otis, but well done. You've learned something today, haven't you? Yeah, thanks. Stay away from electricity. <laughs> Susie, you are the winner. And I've got a prize for you. Katia, bring on the prize. Oh, thank, thank you very much. It's uh, pretty think... good. It's an energy-saving oh. light bulb. <laughs> Just what I've always wanted. Isn't that good? Yeah. Um, and also, I think I have your challenge. Katia, can I...? Get the envelope. This is very exciting. It's like the Oscars. Susie and Otis, you are going to become Mr and Mrs Average. Oh. You'll be borrowing the home of an average UK tech user, and your challenge is to save as much money as possible using the tech inside. Right. Otis, you must replace the existing tech with money-saving gadgets. OK. Susie, yeah. you have to find the cheapest ways to service and power the tech. OK. And the person who makes the biggest savings wins the challenge. OK. Brilliant. But anyway, that's enough from me. Good luck. Thanks for playing and good night. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I've won this. Yeah, whatever. OK, so I might have cheated a bit, but we soon patched up our differences and headed off to our new average home. Mrs Dealey. Mr Dealey. Our new home. Nice. Our new pad contained the kind of gadgetry and tech common to most UK homes, and our challenge was to make savings on using it all based on average running costs for a year. So we set to work researching our different plans of action as we settled into a temporary life of domestic bliss together. It's hot in here. So, want to turn it down? Please, it's quite warm, I was saying. Show you guys out. Hey, the picture of domestic bliss. Aren't we? At home with the dealies. You see, there's a sitcom in there. 200 quid, you leave your Xbox on. Do you know what? Switch it off with the money you save, buy another Xbox <laughs> and get multi-screen going. Yeah, well, that's what we're talking about, saving money. And if you carry on watching, hopefully we'll be able to save you hundreds, if not thousands of pounds on your gadgets and your bills this year. Brilliant. Right, now it's time for a break. But straight after that, Jason will be showing you the gadget toys set to dominate 2010. And the gadget show's bold and fearless hunk, uh, Otis Dealey, will be crying like a baby while testing action cameras on a hair-raising bobsleigh ride. Welcome back. Now, it's time for this week's Top 5, and as you might have guessed by the shenanigans going on in the studio, uh, it's all about toys. There was a time when a toy was a piece of wood, but thankfully things have improved. And the kind of technology you see in these things now, ten years ago you'd have found it in NASA or the military. So, what's going to be the biggest toy of this year? I'm so glad you asked. Hang on, behave yourself. Hang on. Ah! Easy! That's not fair! Why? Because I've got this. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> The Toy Fair at Olympia is Britain's biggest showcase of new toy tech. A must for a big kid like me. I've had a quick scoop round, I've got to tell you, it looks like there's some really cool stuff coming your way in the next 12 months. There were nearly 200 toy manufacturers showing off their latest wares. Oh man, check it out! Look out, enemy sniper! And after a hectic day of playing, testing and breaking stuff... <laughs> this is my top five toys for 2010. At number five, a brilliant RC car. It's called the Rock Crawler. It's got an independent rear. Ouch! And a front axle. Which means it should, theoretically, drive over anything. The Rock Crawler has low gearing specifically designed for off-road action. With three motors and a tri-channel controller, it's a great RC car for a young child that won't get stuck on every bump. At number four, it's the Connects Hot Shot Video Coaster, a build your own roller coaster kit with over 725 parts. And as the name suggests, it does a very, very cool thing. There's a camera in the front of this mini coaster, so if I set it going, 
I should actually be able to record what it feels like to ride my coaster. To experience your ride, take the car off the tracks, attach it to your computer via USB and download the video. Yay! It's me! Look at that! It's brilliant! At number three, it's Chatman. Essentially, a little toy that plugs into your computer via the USB port and communicates via voice. Hey, start chatting with your friends and I'll make sure we'll have fun! And this matrix of LEDs that enable him to smile and do kind of emoticon like expressions. Uh, the software you've got enables you to talk to him. Oh, you again! He can intelligently respond, so I can have a chat with him and say, um, how are things? I'm happy! Okay, so he's having a good day and he'll respond because of the AI. Artificial intelligence, or AI, allows Chapman to react to information in a similar way to a human being. <laughs> He's aimed at kids aged between 8 and 14 and is designed to bring a bit of personality into online chat. He's got three built-in characters, 25 different moods and can react to instant messages from your friends. I just love it. It's such a simple idea, yet brilliantly implemented. Number two, it's the Rubik's Slide. So this is the Rubik's Slide. It's an electronic version of a Rubik's Cube, but with just one surface. And in a kind of Simon Says type arrangement, it gives you patterns on the screen that you've then got to try and recreate. And it's actually very, very clever. It's got a number of ways of moving the squares. First of all, this is the position I'm in right now, and that is the position I've got to get to. So I think what I need to do is twist, and that might get me there. <laughs> it hasn't actually got me there. Hang on. Right. The Rubik's Slide has over 10,000 games of varying complexity. It keeps track of your overall score and has two modes, free play and a lightning round against the clock. Brilliant. And at number one, it's the Razor Rip Rider 360. Oh, yeah, baby! It can turn 360 degrees. It's all made possible by the, the casters on the bottom. You see, you've got this big wheel which keeps the grip while the back is able to spin round. Now I can do it on carpet, but I bet it works even better on concrete. Oh yeah, baby! Ah. Yeah! Woo! Look out, my sis! Woo! -hoo -hoo! But I'm adults getting in the way. Get off with you! <sighs> right, next up, we wanted to test action cameras, little camcorders like these that are becoming increasingly popular. Yeah, they can be used pretty much anywhere to capture any image you want, however extreme. Yeah, and so we came up with a suitably hardcore and extreme challenge to test them. But of course we had to find the right man for the mission. Yeah, obviously, I mean, there was only one man for the job. I mean, Otis, nothing can scare him. No, I mean, remember <laughs> when we sent him into that high-tech haunted house, how fearless he was? <laughs> And remember the total lack of fear he showed when we asked him to go down that water slide in Dubai. <laughs> yeah, and what about on the roller coasters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> laugh it up all you like. So there have been a few moments of indecision on my part, but I can safely say that all of those pale into insignificance compared to the experience I had testing out these camcorders. <laughs> I can't wait to see this. This is the Olympia bobsleigh run at San Moritz, Switzerland. 17 Wall of Death corners contort the 1,700 meter shoot of ice down the mountain side. A bobsleigh takes barely 90 seconds to complete this journey and provides perfect conditions to test the action camera's image stability, picture quality, and to assess how each handles the light and shade of this vertiginous run. <laughs> and in a few minutes, I'm going down it. Now, speeds can exceed 90 miles an hour, and on some corners, you'll experience around 5G. I'm testing out three cameras. Guess how many times I've got to go down it? Happy days. The first action camera was this, the Drift X170. It's the cheapest of the cameras I'd be testing and only records in standard definition. But it does have one or two features that I really like. For instance, there's a built-in screen here so I can compose my shot and the wide-angle lens can be twisted by up to 180 degrees so the camera body can be mounted at any angle and you can still square up the picture. But there was more on my mind than the tech because my bobsleigh was ready for the first run. Our driver, Donald, gave me a quick safety briefing. Before I knew it, we were off. So now I'm feeling a little bit nervous, but uh, I'm excited about it, so 
This should be cool. Here we go. In fact, my heart was in my mouth as the bobsleigh quickly approached the first frightening corner. Feel the speed picking up a bit now. Woo! Flippin' it! I was really feeling the G-force pushing the air out of my lungs, and the bob was still gaining speed. The speed on this is incredible! My face is frozen! It's like being on an out-of-control motorbike! Big time! Yeah! Woo! We were reaching the fastest part of the run. One turn was coming straight after the other now, and everything was just a blur to me. I could only hope that the X-170 captured the experience with a bit more clarity. Whoa! Before I knew it, we were through the first few turns, and that was it. Oh, man! My first run was over. Woo! That was brilliant! Brilliant! I'm drooling like an idiot inside this helmet right now. Fantastic! But how had the X-170 performed? Although the wide-angle lens provided a good field of vision, the pictures lacked vibrancy and particularly struggled with areas of shade, as this comparison with our pro camera shows. So, on to action camera number two, the Contour HD 1080p. Like the X170, you've got the option to twist the lens, but because there's no screen, you have to use the inbuilt lasers to make sure your frame is level. When your lasers are, so is your picture. Run number two. By now, any fears I'd had earlier had evaporated, and I couldn't wait to get going again. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> you can program the Contour HD to shoot in a number of different resolutions. As this is a high-definition camera, we opted for the full 1080p setting to get the very best images. Woohoo! <laughs> Despite having a narrower field of view than the X-170, the Contour gave a much more realistic impression of our 90 mile an hour sledge ride. Everything was much sharper, brighter and bolder. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's good! Two down, one to go, and I'm just as excited about the third and final run as I was about the previous two. You're surprised, aren't you? See, it's height I don't like. Speed? I love it. Our final camera was the GoPro HD Hero. At £300, this is the most expensive of the three, but includes a waterproof housing, which is guaranteed down to 60 metres. OK, testing camera three now. I'm an old pro at this. OK. Like the Contour, the GoPro can shoot from standard up to full 1080p resolution, which was the setting we chose. Oh. Although its mounting system is a bit cumbersome, the pictures were easily the clearest of the three cameras. <laughs> and gave the most natural results with brilliant depth of colour and excellent ability to cope with the changes of light. Yeah! Oh! 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 It's so exhilarating. There's nothing not to like about it. wonder if I can blag another go. So to the G ratings. The X170 gets three Gs. The built-in monitor makes it easy to use, but the picture lacked the vibrancy of the other two cameras. The Contour HD gets 4Gs. Full 1080p resolution gets you a rich, sharp picture, and I like the compact design. But the winner is the GoPro HD Hero with 5Gs. It produced truly outstanding picture quality and sharpness. Right, time for another short break now, but after that... Otis and I get down to the business of competitive money saving. Just how much can we cut the running costs of all our tech? Who's queen of the cheapskates now? And John gets all aerated about Blu-ray. Come on! Is it brilliant or pointless? Find out after the break. Welcome back. Time now to return to this week's ferociously competitive challenge between myself and her with the legs. <laughs> Yes, Otis and I are trying to reduce the running costs of our gadgets over a period of a year. Yep, I can only use efficient and clever gadgets. Yeah, and I can only do it by getting the best deals that I can on power and services. So we decided to make like husband and wife. We moved into a suburban semi and did all the things that married couples do. Yeah, not exactly all the things, though. Unfortunately. 
In our suburban pad, my challenge was to replace our average tech with energy-saving alternatives. But I'd been given a budget to stick to. I could spend no more than the combined cost of the tech I'd be replacing. As my challenge was to cut down the costs of servicing and powering the tech, my first job was to check out that power usage, which meant energy monitors. Now, they don't directly save you money. The aim is that they make you more aware of the energy that you're consuming, so you become more careful. I plumbed for the Watson energy monitor. Through a clip and transmitter attached to your mains electricity meter, it transmits your power consumption wirelessly to a display that you can put wherever you want around the house. So, this rather funky-looking bar here displays your energy consumption in watts, or, more scarily, if you tilt it, it's got a tilt sensor, in pounds. And it glows a different colour, depending on how much electricity you're using. And the idea is that you use software to track your consumption over a period of time and, theoretically, try and bring it down. Based on a 10% electricity saving, that would be a projected annual saving of £83. Turn those hair straighteners off, Otis! Actually, I was getting busy in the bedroom. <clears throat> By replacing the power block under the computer desk with an IntelliPanel, this detects when your computer is sleeping or off and then powers down your peripheral devices too. It's like having a gadget version of your girlfriend under here who goes around turning things off after you've finished using them. <laughs> is that just me? And it was out with the power-draining desktop itself and in with the ultra-efficient Fit PC. Its small frame and its Intel Atom processor means it only uses 9 watts of power compared to the 80 watts of power used by our existing desktop. So that's an amazing 90% energy saving without scrimping on performance. Which meant an estimated annual saving of £59 so far for me. Well, I was cutting power too. The average home has 12 devices on standby at any one time, which can add up to a lot of money for nothing. So I went around the house unplugging any charges that were plugged in but not doing anything. Then I went for some more techie solutions. This is the eco button, and if you're going to leave your computer, you just press it and it puts your computer into the most energy efficient saving mode. And then when you come back, you just press the button again and it tells you how much money you've saved. And I've installed a standby saver behind the television in the socket, so when I switch the TV off with the remote, the standby saver switches everything off at the wall so I don't have to climb behind the television. Brilliant. So reducing standby added a further saving of £54 to my total. I've already saved a ton of money. I am the queen of the cheapskate. That's, oh, yeah. that's all well and good, Susie, but what? we can make a stack load more of televisual savings if we just replace that with this bad boy. All oh, right. yeah. Chuckle vision. Yes, this is what I reckoned was the most energy efficient TV around. This Samsung TV has LED rather than cathode backlighting, meaning it only draws around 85 watts of power, compared to the 165 watts of the existing 40-inch LCD. Hey, mm? Who's queen of the cheapskates now? Oh, yeah, you, if you want to be queenie. But I wasn't finished there. I also replaced the PS3 with a Wii, which requires less processing and so uses around a tenth of the power, depending on the game being played. Both of which added another £31 to my total. OK, I was clearly going to have to up my game. And while I couldn't change the tech, I could change the bills, starting with the utilities. There are some quick ways to cut your utility bills immediately. Switch to direct debit and online paperless billing and you'll save about 20%, just like that. I then used a selection of price comparison sites, first making sure they have the consumer focus stamp, meaning they provide impartial results. The best deals are there to attract new customers, so it's a good idea to refresh your deal regularly. On average, people who use these sites save £200 a year. 200 quid, not to be sniffed at. And that 200 quid brought my total so far to £337. Meanwhile, I'd moved on to some of the biggest power drainers in the home, the white goods. So it was in with some of the best value energy efficient fridge freezers, washing machines and tumble dryers I could find. I've gone for appliances that have at least an A rating and whilst not breaking the bank, they will deliver on energy efficiency. Of course, you can make just as big a savings yourself by using the appliances efficiently. For instance, keeping the fridge door closed. A saving of 84 quid brought my running total to £174. 
Well, my savings were coming in thick and fast now, first by switching to a current best broadband deal, then by changing to a low-cost override provider for home phone calls. So you just have to dial a code before the number, and then your call gets rerouted and your calls cost less. ka -ching. Next, to get uber frugal with the mobile tariff. I've checked out billmonitor.com, developed by mathematicians from Oxford University, which can analyse your bill statements to calculate the best deal for you. However, I discovered on my existing mobile deal I could shed and use minutes by dropping a tariff, which some networks allow you to do after a set period of time. So, all my internet and phone savings brought in a whopping £435. Get in. Not bad, Susie, not mm. bad, but how about this for an idea? This is the second mobile in the house. It's out of contract yeah. and it's worth £80. Okay. So, out with that, by yeah. selling it, of course, and replace with these fellas. Ah, oh, eh? Skype phones. Yeah. Call me sometime. The INQ Mini 3G phones are Skype enabled, allowing you free calls between phones on the 3 network wherever you have a 3G signal and calls to other networks on a pay-as-you-go basis. So potentially a great money saver if, say, you live in a city and a lot of your calls are to one person. Bye. Bye, darling. Bye. Estimated saving over a year, 180! But if I was going to be king of the skin flints, I needed one last big idea. Lighting the home accounts for around 16% of the average electricity bill, and each energy-saving bulb can save around £6 a year. These babies use five times less electricity and last ten times longer than normal light bulbs. So, I'm going to be quids in, and I'm going to be putting Susie in the shade. <laughs> shade. L lights. In fact, that £139 saving brought my total to £493 so far. But I was looking good for victory with a running total of £772. You see, that's where me and my girlfriend are going wrong. We're not penny-pinching enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's what our relationship needs. There you go. And apart from that completely preposterous idea of exchanging your PS3 for a Wii... <laughs> it was just to save energy, didn't it? I know, I'm just being facetious. Some great tech. If you like the idea of saving as much money as possible when it comes to buying and running your tech and gadgets, then listen up, because it's time now for this week's competition. Yep, yeah, this week we've put together what we think is the most comprehensive package of tech and tech services that we ever have on The Gadget Show. Yeah, as well as many of the gadgets uh, that you'll see in today's episode of the show, uh, we're also going to be giving away a bunch of tech services, so free broadband, free satellite TV, free phone calls. Yeah, and also the three action cameras that Otis has so bravely tested. Thanks, Susie. And so that you can use them in the manner they were intended, we're also giving away a powerboat experience on the south coast to the lucky winner and three of their friends. Nice! <laughs> nice! Um, OK, it's a truly life-changing prize fund, and if you'd like your life changed by it, then perhaps you better sit back right now and look at the very big list that's about to appear on your screens. You could win a Suzuki Hypercat experience for you and three mates, a Drift Innovation X170 action cam, a Contour HD action cam, and a GoPro HD Hero action cam, and free satellite TV for a year. A wireless router and free broadband for a year, a Bosch fridge freezer, a Panasonic washing machine, an AEG tumble dryer and a Samsung television. A CompuLab Fit PC2, a Watson energy monitor, an Intelli panel, an Eco button and an Effigy standby eliminator socket. An INQ Mini 3G phone and £40 worth of free calls a month for a year. A Garmin EcoRoot HD, a bunch of Philips and Mega Man energy saving light bulbs, a Blu-ray player and 20 Blu-ray movies. 50-inch plasma TV, a 32-inch LCD TV, a high-end desktop gaming PC, a MacBook laptop and a Canon Pixma printer. A Helimission RC toy, a Panasonic TZ7 compact digital camera, a Nikon D90 SLR camera, a Wii and a Wii Fit. A DSi, an Xbox 360, a PS3, a PSP Go, a Pyramac gaming chair and a whole load of games for all the consoles. A Swap Watch, a GoPed Noped, a pair of Salomon walking boots, an Apple iPod Touch and an Arcos 5 media player. A 5.1 surround sound speaker system, a pair of Denon headphones, a high-def Panasonic camcorder, a Sony reader and a bulletproof USB memory stick. An Orbi Triumph electric toothbrush, a Tonium portable DJ system, a BMW Zeppelin mini iPod dock, a Berghaus Bioflex rucksack and a copy of Windows 7 software. A Magimix 2000 food processor, a Yogi Gatekeeper Pico, a Flip Video Ultra, a Griffin Bluetooth headset and a Brompton folding bike. A Philips juicer, a flat light, a Dyson ball vacuum cleaner and a Sony digital photo frame. 
All that plus four tickets to The Gadget Show live from the 8th to the 11th of April this year at the NEC in Birmingham, plus a limo to take you there and back again. It's a prize fund worth in excess of 20 and a half grand. And with the chance of winning the lot, you'll need to know the answer to this question. Which band had a hit in 1976 with Money, Money, Money? Was it A, ABBA, B, Blue or C, Girls Aloud? To enter, call 0904 1616 or text A, B or C to 63555. Or send your answer name and contact telephone number on the back of a postcard or sealed envelope to Gadget Show 2, PO Box 46556, London N1, 0WW. Calls cost £1.50 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Text cost £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. For rules, go to 5.tv slash win. Lines close at midday on Monday the 15th of February and two days later for postal entries. Of course, we'll show you the question again at the end of the show. Good luck. Now, I want to talk to you about Blu-ray. I think we all agree that high-definition TV and video is great and a technology to be embraced. But the high-definition disc format, Blu-ray, seems to have missed the whole HD bandwagon. Sales have been slow to take off and most people I know wouldn't dream of buying a Blu-ray player. And everyone I know who does have one only got it by default because they bought a Sony PS3 games console. So, is Blu-ray a format too far? Has the disc had its day? Or are we all missing a trick? And should we be skipping off to the shops tomorrow to snap up a Blu-ray player? Well, I've been weighing up the arguments. It's easy to see why many people just don't see the point in Blu-ray. For a start, they're so expensive. Woo! £1,649.95? It's just not worth all that money for a bit better pictures. They're another cumbersome, space-consuming metal box cluttering the place up. And Blu-rays can be twice the cost of DVDs when they first come out. And what makes it worth is there's so little content available. Only 1,500 titles have been released so far on Blu-ray, compared to over 90,000 on DVD. Unless you're going to restrict yourself to the latest blockbusters, you're going to end up watching DVDs anyway. And don't think your problems end there. Come on! Because even if you find the movie you want, the complex menus take an age to load. And who needs all these discs? I mean, these days you can download or stream movies directly to your TV at virtually the same levels of quality, but at a fraction of the cost. If you want to watch high-definition TV and movies, you already can on Sky and Virgin. And if you want to rent the latest blockbusters in HD, you can do so in the comfort of your living room by downloading them via Apple TV. But the biggest problem with Blu-ray is that unless you've spent a small fortune on a decent TV and the surround sound system to go with it, it's utterly pointless. Rubbish. So, there we are. Blu-ray's just not worth the effort. It's overblown, overcomplicated and overpriced. Or is it? The thing is, I can see all those arguments, but in truth, I absolutely adore Blu-ray. I think it's the best thing to happen to home viewing. Since black and white gave way to colour, it really is that good. I mean, just look at all that detail, those superb, strong colours, that rich contrast. It makes a DVD look positively fuzzy by comparison. High definition contains six times as much information per frame as standard definition. And because a Blu-ray disc holds far more of that information than you'd obtain by downloading the same film, you're guaranteed the best possible viewing experience. The sound quality is even more impressive because it's completely uncompressed. So what you hear is a carbon copy of the original Studio Master. And when it comes to home movies, you're future-proofing yourself with Blu-ray. Everything these days, from camcorders through compact cameras, even to mobile phones, records in HD. And most home movie editing programmes export to Blu-ray, so you're keeping your footage in glorious high definition. To prove how much better Blu-ray is than DVD, I arranged to measure the heart rates of a group of students from Aston University while they watched a sequence from the BBC's Life documentary. 
OK, welcome, guys. You're all now wearing your polar transmitter belts. Half the group watched it on standard DVD, while the other half saw the same sequence on a high-definition Blu-ray. The results were conclusive. Those who watched on DVD experienced a 26.7% increase in their average heart rates, but the rates for those students watching on Blu-ray went up by a staggering 39%. That's half as much again. And proves my point that Blu-ray is a far more exciting and involving experience. So, there you have it. The naysayers would have you believe that Blu-ray is pointless and soon to be outdated. But I think it's a stunning medium that's starting to come into its own. Nice item, John. I'm a big fan of Blu-ray because you get to watch high quality and great sound at the same time. Yeah, I think the quality is great, but for sales of those discs to take off, the actual price has to come down to be much closer yeah. to the yeah. DVD. Yeah, that's the point. You can't argue with that experience, can you? I mean, it's absolutely it's fantastic. But the price and the lack of content... I mean, what you really need is to wake up and find a Blu-ray player outside your front door, <laughs> don't you? Then, no, then it can move on. But until then, I think people are quite happy streaming films and downloading stuff. I am. I, I certainly am as well. In fact, for me, Blu-ray kind of gets in the way of our eventual move towards the big data cloud from which you can drag high, high def, high quality content mm -hmm. straight down to what, your handheld device, your computer, your TV, whatever. Yeah. At the moment, you can't download in that quality until you can do. Mm. It's a great solution. Mm. That is Mid beautiful. I can't mm. argue with that, can you? <laughs> right, time for the last break in tonight's show now, but after that, we reach the climax of this week's challenge. Who will be able to save the most money on their tech costs, Susie or Otis? Stick around, because coming up, there's even more brilliant advice that may save you money. Welcome back. Now it's time to return to this week's challenge in which Otis and I are trying to reduce the running costs of our gadgets where possible. And it's a new sport we've invented that I'm calling competitive tightness. Now, for me, a, a generous soul, this was quite a hard ask. I mean, I'd find it quite difficult becoming a penny pincher, whereas uh, Scroogey Sue's found this her dream assignment. I can't believe that you're going to go down this path. Yes, and I'm going to ignore that look <laughs> and go back to the challenge. So we'd already reduced the costs in the house as much as we could, but there was still the question of the family car. Hey, Suze, you couldn't lend us a fiver, could you? <sighs> no, I'm like the Queen. I don't carry any cash. Told you. Day two in the average house, and the dealies have decided to step outside. OK, Susie, it's obvious I'm going to need something radical to catch you in this challenge. As usual. There is an area that we haven't tried to make any savings yet, though. No? The vehicular department. Yes, yes, having said that, these are the keys to the uh, household runaround. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, while you get acquainted with this, mm. I'm going to take this for a test drive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, money saving, sweetheart. Oh, oh, yeah, it will save us shed loads in the long run. Are you sure? The Tesla Roadster is the world's fastest and I reckon sexiest electric car. It can travel 244 miles on a single charge of its lithium ion batteries, but just as importantly, can go 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. This is every bit as fun to drive as a petrol sports car. And if we're talking long term, I could save nearly all of the £1,250 a year it costs the average UK driver to fuel their car. That being said, this is a luxury, and luxury does come at a cost. Just a little bit more than the price of your average car. Yes, in fact, this electric beauty would set you back more than 80 grand. It would take a few years for those savings to kick in. They'd be fun years. Ah. I might not have been able to get a new car, but I did have something that could help save money on the road. The Eco Route is a free download for Garmin satnavs, and it's aimed at saving you fuel and therefore money. So all you have to do is put in your destination, and then it gives you the most fuel efficient way of getting there. And while you're driving, it gives you a live cost display as you're going along. The latest version can be used with a small dongle which plugs into a port to the engine. It'll work with most cars less than two years old. The dongle then sends real-time data about your car's performance, including fuel consumption via Bluetooth to the sat-nav, giving you a live feed of the cost of your journey. It's also evaluating your driving. You get a score out of 100 at the end based on your fuel-efficient driving, so you have to be careful of acceleration and braking. So you can't go racing people off the lights, but on the upside, 
you're not going to get any speeding tickets. Home sweet home. 38 pence. Quite good. Meanwhile, I was having a bit of a reality check. As attached as I am to this car, I am duty bound to find a more affordable alternative. Hence, my cute friend here. <laughs> right hand drive. This is the Italian-styled My Car two-person electric vehicle. It takes five hours to charge in a standard socket and then can run for up to 60 miles. It may only have a top speed of 38 miles per hour, but as a long-term money saver, it's a front runner. OK, so this car isn't to everybody's taste. And a limited range means it's best suited to being a city car. But think of the savings. And not just on fuel. By going electric, there'd be no road tax, no congestion charge, and in some places, even free parking. With my new wheels alongside a streamlined gadget life, I reckoned I'd saved enough to leave Susie eating my dust. There wow. you go. Hey, do you know what? A really interesting challenge this week. Some fantastic technology. Uh, I'm very impressed with both of your money and energy saving efforts, but the question still remains who won the challenge? Who saved the most money? Well, it's obviously me. Why is it obviously it might be me? No, 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 because I energy saved like a good in this okay, time. I have to stop this bickering. <laughs> I, need, I need help with this. I need a man <laughs> who is the very embodiment of objectivity, Mr John Bentley. Now, I've got all the figures here on my clipboard. Oh, good, like, John, so... would you like a cake? <laughs> ah, <laughs> what now, are you doing? I am partial to the old fondant fancy. I... However, <laughs> I think under the circumstances, they, that would constitute an inducement. See, I love and that. it just yeah. won't work. He's genuinely impartial. John, yeah. that's why you wear the shirt. Yes, Carry on, please. I've got the facts and figures here. What we've done is, is we've worked out your savings as accurately as possible and we projected them over the course of the year. Now, obviously, it's just a snapshot and the individual deals you do on your tech and on your services vary, but these are the results. OK. And, Susie, your projected saving would be... £1,162. Wow. Over a grand, right? That's, that's yeah. Well done. Thank Money you. for nothing. Yes. Otis. Yeah. Your projected saving... One thousand two hundred and eighty pounds, yeah! <laughs> which means, Otis, that you made the biggest saving and therefore win. Yes, yes Otis. Otis. Thank you very much. And can I just thank you? Yeah. And can I just say, get used <laughs> to the notion of Otis Dealey, the O Dog, winning the a lot more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Less fear, less defeat. You know, just more gung ho. We won. Take the shine off, Jason. Yeah, <laughs> you won <laughs> this week's challenge. But ultimately, we're all winners because for yeah. some fantastic tips, you know, I've just worked out. But if you were a family, for real, a couple of cars, all the rest of it, you've saved almost £2,500 in this challenge. Fantastic. Which is quite spectacular. Anyway, we'll see you next time. See you next week. Next time on The Gadget Show, Susie and I become pop yeah. video yeah. directors. Cue playback. Yet we face the challenge of using the best tech we can lay our hands on to make the best pop videos we can for rock band Fight Star and American pop sensation Harmar Superstar. John travels to Italy to put the latest smartphones through their paces. And Otis test drives the incredible snow glider. That's next week, but right now, before the credits roll, remember to enter this week's incredible competition. As well as all the tech you see flying across your screen right now, we're also giving away a thrilling powerboat experience day on the south coast for the winner and three of their lucky mates. As well as four tickets to this year's Gadget Show Live exhibition at the NEC in Birmingham. It's an incredible prize fund worth over £20,500. And to be with the chance of winning it all, you'll need to know the answer to this question. Which band had a hit in 1976 with Money, Money, Money? Was it A, ABBA, B, Blue or C, Girls Aloud? To enter, call 0904 161655 or text A, B or C to 63555. Or send your answer, name and contact telephone number on the back of a postcard or sealed envelope to Gadget Show 2, PO Box 46556, London N10 WW. Calls cost £1.50 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably. More. Text costs £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. For rules, go to 5.tv slash win. Lines close at midday on Monday the 15th of February and two days later for postal entries. Goodbye and good luck.